Can I turn a random scribble into art? Let's find out. Like scribble. K. But like not, you know, like a K. It's a lot of pressure. <laughs> Done. <laughs> Pencils down. So here it is, the masterpiece scribble that my husband Dave gave me. Thank you, Dave. Essentially, the scribble challenge comes to this. You take a random scribble and you turn it into art. So let's get into brainstorming some ideas because I have no idea what this scribble is going to be. And because we only have one original of this scribble and I didn't want to sketch on top of it and potentially ruin it, I thought the best idea would be to take a picture of it with my iPad, bring it into the app Procreate, and then start doodling and sketching my ideas for it. This way the original piece of paper is kept clean because let's be honest, I have no idea what to draw and I'm going to be doing a lot of sketching. So getting into brainstorming some sketches and ideas for the scribble, I was surprised at how hard this was. It is called a challenge, but I expected it to be a little easier for some reason. It was so hard for me to see anything in particular in this scribble, and I was starting to get a little worried. Going abstract seemed to be a really fun way to approach this challenge. It seems like most people try to be very literal and illustrative, so I thought, hey, I could be abstract. I could get really weird. But then I thought maybe the whole point of this challenge was to create something that wasn't abstract out of something that was abstract. So because of how flowy this scribble was, I started to think of it as a dress or a piece of clothing. And once I sketched a figure under it, I started to think, what if I embraced the scribble and created this scribble princess sort of character who has a scribble for hair and she has a little scribble creature. But then I thought, is that too easy? Am I maybe embracing the scribble so much that it kind of ruins the whole challenge of getting away from the scribble? Obviously at this point, you can tell I started to think way too hard about this simple and fun challenge. So then I thought, what if I turn the scribble into like a rope or like a really long dreadlock from someone's hair? But again, I thought that maybe turning it into a rope seemed a little cliche, just a little too obvious because what's more wiggly than a rope? or a piece of string. It was at this point that I was getting a little concerned. I thought I was going to have an epic fail on my hands here, but I pushed through and I managed to get an idea that I think embraces both my art style and the scribble. I didn't show you the sketch so that you guys could be more surprised as I penciled it. So here we go. So like I had mentioned earlier, one of the main things that I was seeing in this scribble was a piece of cloth or like a clothing item. And so I kind of went in that direction a little bit. I turned our scribble into a sheet ghost sort of character. I honestly don't know because this idea and just the illustration altogether doesn't make a lot of sense. It's just kind of fun and silly and weird. It's art. So it has legs, our character, but also it looks like it really does turn into a ghost. So I'm not really sure what's going on here, but like I said, I just had fun with it. I turned a part of the line into a snake that I made going through its mouth because why not? It seems like there's a lot more meaning in this illustration than there actually is. I started to think and try to make a meaning out of this illustration, but I was kind of having a hard time coming up with anything. We've got this long snake going into the ghost of a mouth and behind the ghost is things exploding out of it. Now this is where I really struggled about what I wanted coming out of this ghost. At first I thought about making it a rainbow just flowing out of this ghost and having really happy, magical, positive items coming out of the ghost. I don't know what that represents. Maybe the ghost was full of lots of rage and anger when it died and the snake is helping it pass on. This is so much more morbid than I anticipated. For some reason I wasn't really into the whole positive thing, so I just decided to really go for gore and Halloween? Spooks? I don't know. We're almost in October, right? So exploding out from behind the ghost, we have blood, I suppose, and a variety of spooky items like a skull and a butcher knife and a bucket of red paint. Nass blood. I don't know what this means. I don't know why I drew it. I just thought it was fun and weird. 
and silly and I honestly couldn't believe that this is the result I got from a fun scribble challenge, but here we are. I think that's also partially why I decided to go with this idea in particular because you think, oh, it's gonna be a fun scribble challenge and we're gonna have a good time making something shareable and happy. And then I go and make whatever this is. So overall, like I said, I found this challenge to be a lot more challenging than I anticipated. Obviously, it really depends on your scribble and how complex it is. Again, thank you, Dave, for this scribble. It really reminds me a lot of the blob challenge, but at least with the blob challenge, you are able to work with it as a shape as a whole. With the scribble challenge, you're having to work around line work that can really interfere with other aspects of the drawing as it intersects and goes through. But that is one of the aspects that I really threw out the window and just decided to ignore and embrace in a sort of abstract way. But basically, I kept it a little more simple and that really does embrace my illustrative style and I kind of was feeling like maybe either I wasn't trying hard enough or it seemed like I was taking an easy route because I wasn't adding too many details, but you know what? I had fun with it and I think the result is really interesting and strange and sometimes it's fun to just make some really weird art that came from a scribble. I think the biggest challenge when it came to the line art and the way it interacted with itself was the area where the snake is on top of the ghost. We have a line of the body of the ghost going straight down through the snake and I really wasn't sure how I wanted to approach this. Was I going to make the ghost transparent and have the snake under the ghost cloth thing? Was I going to try to use the black ink to make it look like the snake was black and then you could just ignore the lines? But in the end, I thought it would be more interesting to just have it how it is and not have to have an explanation for it and just kind of run with the weird abstractness that you get from this challenge. So I just kind of left the line there. I do think that the snake is on top of the ghost, though I do show that it goes under the ghost cloth. But when ghosts exist in this world, you don't have to try to make things make sense, right? Ghosts do weird things. So really there's no telling where this snake is. Is it under the ghost? Is it on top of the ghost? What's happening? I don't know. It's just really interesting to sometimes let yourself relax and let art be weird and not make sense because I am such a controlling artist. I like everything to be perfect and neat and clean. So a challenge like this was really, it really challenged me, I guess, to try to ignore my tendencies to make everything make sense and look perfect. Eventually you just have to accept that there are just random lines going through your art. Who cares? I, I, I care. I still care. Coloring this piece was pretty simple. The ghost itself was kind of disappointing because it was just, just a white ghost. I really wanted to keep that classic ghost look, so that's why I left it white. Now I'm actually thinking I probably should have put some blood splatters on this ghost and the snake. That probably would have visually made things a little more interesting by adding texture, but what can you do? I also had a lot of fun playing around with the transparency of the ghost's material. So because the background is so simple, it's just a gray square, I really wanted to focus on the character and the scribble itself and not necessarily make a background out of it. That could be a future challenge, maybe making a background out of a scribble. But I did have a lot of fun having the ghost interact with that gray square in the background and the flesh color and the snake color. Speaking of snake color, this illustration is green and red. Who's ready for Christmas? I'm just joking. I'm actually quite excited for Halloween. And just because I kind of felt like the edges of this piece were a little plain, which I'm okay with, I went ahead and splattered some red paint around the edges just to add a little something extra to it. So more blood splatters, yay. And that's it. That completes my scribble challenge illustration. our finished scribble challenge and all of its strange and spooky glory. I really think it represents my art style and just my general artistic ways in general. 
I like that I didn't push myself to do something crazy, but embrace the weird lines and the overlapping and things that don't make sense. I think my current obsession with abstract art probably helped with that. So I had a lot of fun with this. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Stay golden. And now a huge thank you to my wonderful patrons for all of their support. You guys are the best. If you want to be in the credits at the end of my videos, see secret sketches, coloring pages, early access, and more, check out my Patreon by clicking a link in the description. Thank you guys all so much for the support. Bye.